How is carbon dioxide transported out of the cells, through the blood, and out of the body? And how is carbon dioxide transport involved in regulation of blood pH? First most critical point is this equation. Carbon dioxide and water are converted by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase to carbonic acid, which can freely dissociate into bicarbonate ion and a proton. Bicarbonate ion can give off another proton to become carbonate. Carbonic acid, bicarbonate ion. These reactions can go in both directions. It is a, not an energy requiring reaction. In fact, carbonic anhydrase will, go, will take the reaction in either direction. It simply speeds up the reaction. It will happen even at room temperature, but much more slowly than with carbonic anhydrase. In cells, carbon dioxide is generated. It diffuses easily across membranes and into capillaries where it enters red blood cells. If we blow up that red blood cell, then carbon dioxide entering will combine with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, an enzyme that is abundant in red blood cells, to form carbonic acid, which then will dissociate. And because carbon dioxide is present in abundance, it's driving the reaction in this direction into HCO3 minus and H plus. That H plus can bind to deoxyhemoglobin and therefore is no longer a free proton and is buffered. The bicarbonate is passively transported out in exchange for a chloride. And this is sometimes called the chloride shift, which you don't need to remember, but if it helps you remember the process, then it'll be useful. So now let's look at what happens in the whole animal. And I'm going to draw the entire circulatory system as a donut. With the lung over here, so this would be the space of the lung. I'm not showing the epithelial tissue. These are the blood vessels, so these are capillaries in the lung. Blood would be going this way. Over here is what I'll refer to as the system, which is everything except the lung, muscles, organs, brain, and so on. And cells in the system are generating carbon dioxide, which is entering the blood. And here I'm going to show a large red blood cell where, because carbon dioxide is present in abundance, it will combine with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is abundant. It's being driven in this direction by the presence of carbon dioxide. So it dissociates into a bicarbonate ion and a proton, which binds to deoxyhemoglobin. The bicarbonate gets transported out in exchange for a chloride. And so bicarbonate increases in the blood. The protons are buffered. When we go to the lungs, this is reversed. So here's our red blood cell again. In the lungs, carbon dioxide is being breathed out. And so carbon dioxide is constantly leaving. Carbon dioxide is leaving here, and therefore, in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, any carbonic acid will dissociate into carbon dioxide and water, and some of the bicarbonate that was present in the blood will wind up being converted back to carbon dioxide by this pathway. Bicarbonate ion plus a proton to carbonic acid in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, which is tethered to the capillary endothelium, which is an epithelial cell layer. In addition, there's some carbon dioxide in the red blood cell, and so that also is going to be leaving down its partial pressure gradient. And that means that any carbonic acid will now be converted to water and carbon dioxide, reversing the reaction before. In the tissues, we had carbon dioxide and water converted to carbonic acid. Here in the lungs, it's the reverse carbonic acid converted in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, still present in the red blood cell, into water and carbon dioxide. That means that bicarbonate and protons are going to be combining to form carbonic acid. The protons are coming from 
being bound to hemoglobin, and the bicarbonate ion is coming back in in exchange for a chloride. So here, we reverse the reaction. We could have the entire reaction taking place simply in the red blood cell. The presence of this carbonic anhydrase tethered to the capillary endothelium means that we speed it up. We have two ways to get our protons and bicarbonate converted back into carbon dioxide. One pathway is this one. The other pathway is this one one in the capillary epithelium, the other in the red blood cells. Whereas over here in the system, we only had one pathway. And the reason for carbonic anhydrase present in abundance in lung is to speed up this reaction to make sure you get rid of carbon dioxide quickly. Across vertebrates, blood pH is about 0.6 above neutral. We're used to thinking of 7.0 as neutral pH, and that's true at a typical room temperature, 25 degrees centigrade. But at 36, your body temperature neutral is actually 6.8. Therefore, normal pH in a human varies from around 7.35 to 7.45. Animals with cooler body temperatures tend to have a little bit higher normal blood pHs, again, about 0.6 above neutral for their typical body temperature. Hyperventilation, when you're breathing fast, you will drive off carbon dioxide faster. You create a much higher partial pressure gradient that will bring carbon dioxide out. And in that case, you can drive blood pH in the lung, in the blood leaving the lungs, up above this normal range, uh, easily probably up to 7.8. If that was the pH in your whole body, that would be dangerous but you quickly buffer that, and we'll talk about buffering mechanisms next. How do we buffer pH? There are three major mechanisms of balancing pH. The first one is excretion by the lungs. That's the process we just talked about. Faster breathing increases CO2 loss, Remember, CO2 is directly related to acidity. So as you get rid of CO2, you become less acidic. You increase pH, make the blood more basic. Slower does the opposite. You adjust your breathing rate to maintain a concentrations in the blood that maintain normal blood pH, and you're doing that all the time. The second major mechanism So here's the first, carbon dioxide and breathing rate adjusts carbon dioxide levels. The second major mechanism is in the kidney in which you can selectively remove either bicarbonate or H+. Under normal conditions, you actually have a net acidity and you can adjust whether you make your fluids either more acid or more basic by how much of the bicarbonate, think of that bicarbonate transporter, or protons. The third major mechanism is by buffering, and you buffer with bicarbonate ion that's related to the rate at which you get rid of carbon dioxide. Your breathing rate is affecting the amount of buffering with. A second major buffering system is phosphate. So adjusting the different ions of phosphate uh, also is a very important mechanism for buffering and for regulating pH.